conic sections, parabolas and hyperbolas. We studied parabolas in Algebra 1, primarily with quadratic equations. I just want to do a quick, a quick review here because we're not studying so much the equation component of it as well as what we're doing is trying to identify the focus and the directrix in a parabola. Remember, a parabola always opens from one side or the other, and I've got some equations here. Um, y equals x squared, it opens upward. Y equals negative x squared, it opens downward. And then on the right here, notice it's x to the fourth plus 3x squared minus 1. Any even exponent as the highest component of an equation will always give you some sort of parabola. They also open left or right, and what you see here is it's where y equals negative 2 y to the 6. And again, this is an even exponent, but you see it's the shape of a parabola. And since it's, instead of y equals x squared, it's x equals y squared. And then x equals 4y squared on this red parabola opening to the right. Now, more importantly, we want to look at the focus and directrix of the parabola. Now, we have an equation of parabola, and the basic function of an equation for a parabola is going to be up here, y equals a to the x minus h squared plus k. And here's our h and our k, no different than we had with our circles and our ellipses. But we're going to do some work with these as well. Because again, again, these are all conic sections here. So what the focus is, is I've got the focus here. Let me show you an example. I'll show you how we found it in a moment. The focus is when I have a center point, it's always on the same axis as the vertex. This focus here is at 4, 4. The vertex is at 4, 3. So the focus is always going to be on the same axis as the vertex. But the unique thing about the focus is that the distance from the focus through the parabola at any point is the same distance as for the directrix. And I will show you how to find the directrix as well. If it's two, if it we goes two here and goes two straight down, it's the same distance. If I go from the focus to a distance of seven here at this point where it touches the parabola, and I go seven down, it touches the directrix. If I go here 13 straight shot here and I go to the parabola, when I drop that line straight down for 13, it stops at the directrix. We use the focus and directrix in a lot of areas, especially in communication, telescopes, um, the focusing of radars, and that's where focus comes from. It brings everything at one point, and if we can identify where the focus is, we can bring all the concentric components into one area. They even do this in solar power to try to focus all the sun, put all the sunlight in one area. So and that focus is based on where the location of not only the um, X component is, but as well as our, what do you call it, our, our H and our K. So again, the focus lies on the axis of symmetry, which is where, here we are right here, it's right in the vertex. And if we have the equation, the problem form, Y equals A, to x minus h squared plus k. And this is y equals x, based on x squared plus k. Remember, this is basically the y-intercept right here. We can determine the focus on the directrix. My vertex is at h and k. h is my x-axis and k is my y-axis. So it's my vertex is at 4 and 3. Now, if I want to find the vertex, the, the, the focus first, all I'm simply going to do is plug in this equation right here. 
It's still going to be at the A. It's still going to be on that thought line of symmetry. And then for the other act, for the other, the Y component in this case, it'll be K, where K is right here, plus 1 over 4A. And this A is in front of the equation. There's 3 times X plus X minus H squared, or 5, or if there's, just, there's nothing there, it'd be 1. So I've set up a fairly simple directrix here and a focus as well. Find the focus of parabola where y equals 0.25 x minus 4 squared plus 3. Well, there's my k right here. Here's my h. And here's my a. So, I've written them right here. Here's my h. Here's my k. And here's my a. And my focus is going to be at h, comma, k plus 1 over 4h. So it's at 4, still along the line of symmetry. And then it's at 3 plus 1 over 4a. 4 times 0.25, which is my, which is my, um, right here, my a, 0.25, gives me 1. 4 times 0.25 is 1, so it's 1 over 1. So it's 4 comma 3 plus 1 over 1, or 4, 4. And that is my focus. Now, the directrix is found, is found by finding the distance between the focus and the vertex, which in this case is just 1. And then going the opposite direction and along the axis of symmetry. So if this is 1 here, 4, 3 to 4, 4, that's vertical distance of 1, I drop it down 1. So be, it would be at y equals 2. And a directrix is a line that is tangent to the vertex. And again, what we're doing here is whatever distance I go, when I'm trying to focus, if I go, let's say if this was 15 here, whatever the distance is, the actual distance, not 15, goes 15, that same distance will be found when I drop it down vertically. And it goes to the directrix. Now, hyperbola looks like two mirrored parabolas. And these, each one of these halves are called branches, or it's going to opposite directions. Now, like an ellipse, it was, I'm showing sure the equation in a moment, it's very similar to an ellipse. Um, hyperbola has two focuses and two vertices. Now, unlike the ellipse, more like a parabola, we can find the focus. Basically, it's on the outside. It would be more where a parabola is. It will be on top the vertex. Or I should say, if you have a vertex, it'd be to the right or to the left of it. And you can see wherever my my concavity is right here, and it's concave right here. The vert the um, focus will be right there. Here's my vertex is right here. And by the way, the vertexes and the focus are along the major axis. That major axis is called the transverse on a hyperbola. We're still centered in HK, same as a circle, ellipse, and a parabola. Um, the vertices are fixed distance from the center right here. This distance is the same on this side. That looks like it's four here, and it's four here from that HK. And again, this is called the the transverse. Now, like I said, very similar equations with ellipses for a hyperbola, except instead of H X minus H squared over A squared minus. That's the only difference. Y minus K squared over B squared equals 1. Everything similar except for that minus sign, and that gives us a vastly different view for an, for an ellipse compared to a, um, a hyperbola. Again, H and K are, is the center point, H being the horizontal center point, K being the vertical center point. And our horizontal axis is A. 
just like before. Our vertical axis is b. Well, we got basically the same equations here, a squared and b squared, just like with an ellipse. Now, if it opens to the right, we're going to subtract the y from the x. Here's the x is first here, and the y is second here. And this opens to the left and the right. You can see it makes a makes a marking, like I said, an x here. And let me erase this so I don't get too confused. On the flip side, if it opens up and down like a U and an N, and those, these aren't the best U's and N's. But like this and like this, and I'll immediately erase it. It is the the X is subtracted from the Y. In this case, I have X minus K squared, B squared minus X minus, Y minus K squared over B squared minus X minus H squared over A squared. And we still have the center at HK. The vertices, though, you're going to notice since the major axis is on the X axis, it's going to be H plus the uh, H plus A over K. That's where my transverse is going to be. My coda vertices, my minor axis, is going to be here. And here's my major axis. There's my transverse. And my minor axis will be down the middle here. In this case, my major axis is the, here's the transverse right here. And the minor axis is going down the middle here. Let me erase this again. So when we look at this, the equations, I said, you're just subtracting one from the other. It's the only difference. And my focus is found very similar before. The focus is going to be found C squared equals A squared plus B squared um, in both cases. And the slope is going to be plus or minus B over A. And here's my A and here's my B. Now, the equation the asymptote is going to be, the asymptote where it can never touch is Y equals K. Again, here's my K right here, plus or minus B over A, X minus H. Here is the equation for X minus 2 squared over 16 minus Y minus 3 squared over 64 equals 1. On the right here, I've got Y minus 2 squared over 16 and X minus 3 squared over 64 equals 1. Now, don't be concerned by this busy slide here. All I'm showing here is how we can look at each component. Now, first, here's my focus because here's my major axis right here. And again, here's my transverse. So my transverse is, this is gonna be X minus, an X minus Y squared because it's open left and right. I would say x squared minus y squared, which means my focus is going to be in the outside. Here's one of my focuses I found. Here's my other focus I found. Here's the ver here's the vertexes on the major axis. Here's the co-vertex on the minor axis. And I said the minor axis is on the middle. We also have asymptotes where you know it can never touch, and these are slope asymptotes right here. It never can touch those numbers, and it's determined again by finding the plus or minus. B over A, which and here's my A and my B right here, A squared and B squared. So my A is 3, my B is 5, because I got 925 for A squared and B squared. Centers at 3 and 1, I'm sorry, 3 and negative 1 right here. So let's go through this. Let's see how we can find all this information just by we're given the equation. My vertices are H plus A, K. And H minus A, K. My H is 3. My K is minus 1, which I've got here 3 minus 1. And I've got my A squared is 9, so that means my A is 3. My B squared is 25, so that means my B is 5. So now we have all our numbers, basically, to figure out the vertices. My vertices are going to be H plus A. 
comma k. So it'd be it would be three plus a. Three plus three is three plus three is six, right here. And then my my k is minus one. So that's one of my vertices, six minus one, which is right here. Color that in there, make it red now. And my other one's going to be three minus three, which is zero, and minus one, which is going to be right here. It's right on the uh, vertical axis, the y axis, and that's going to be my uh, my vertices. Let's erase this because we got a little more to do here. I got my covertices, which I can find right here. And that's going to be H along both axes. It's in the vertical axis. And in this case, it's going to be right here, my H, V plus K, H, B minus K. So it's going to be 3. That That is my H right here. So both 3. And then H, B plus K, B minus K. B is 5. And my k is negative one. So five negative one plus five is um, four. So it'd be three and four right here. And then three minus one minus five because b minus k, which would be minus six, which is right here. So now we've got from my axis the covertices. And again. My transverse for the major axes is going to be where that where it sits on that y axis. In this case, it's going to be negative one. Let's erase this again. Sorry, making a mess here. So now let's find the focus. My focus, my foci, plural, plural focus, because I got two of them. I go along the major axis. They're going to be, remember, along the transverse, which, as I said before, is negative 1. So, let's find what they are. It's going to be, my focus is C squared equals A squared plus B squared. And my A squared is 9. My B squared is 25. So, that's 34. Square root of 34 is 5.83. And that's going to be from the center point three minus just like we found the focus in the ellipse from the center point three minus 5.83 is minus 2.83 along the transverse a negative one and then three plus 5.83 is 8.83 still along the transverse a negative one what are my slopes my slopes are negative Plus or minus B over A. So it'll be plus or minus 5 over 3. And you can see these are basically slopes of, you know, it looks like 5 over 3. I go 5, if I go 5 up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then I go 3, 3 down. I mean, I'm sorry. Let me erase that. I shouldn't go 5 up. I should go straight up. I'm following this here. Let's go from right here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Yeah, so it's a slope of five, three for one of the asymptotes. And I can go in a different place here. Let's start this one. I can go one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. And that's, I'm going negative three. So that's where I get to five over three and five over negative three. We got two asymptotes here. And those are the slopes for them. So we can find the equation y equals k plus or minus b over a x minus h. So it's going to be my y equals my k is negative 1, again, my transverse, plus or minus 5 over 3, which you figured out, over x minus h, which is my x is 3. I'm sorry, my h is 3 is x minus 3. Not difficult, but there's a lot of moving parts here. So these are probably, I wouldn't say the most complicated, but the most uh, convoluted. Let's go through one more here. And this opens up and down. So I know it's going to be a y squared minus x squared, which is what I've got right here. And that's going to be y minus 2 squared. 
because that's my minus or y plus two squared is my there's my minus two and then x plus four squared and when i look at this i've got b squared and a squared well i'm looking at the equation here if b is b squared is 16 that means b is four and then a squared is nine for this equation there's my 16 and my nine and that means b is b is four and that means a is three so let's find the vertices and the vertices are along the major axis and the major axis in this case is going to be along the transverse here which is going up and down so when i do this i'm going to figure out my vertices and it's going to be again along it looks like it's negative four here which is what i've got right there so it's negative four on both sides and then it would be k plus b and k minus b my k is remember my k is right here x um x minus h which would be four minus four so it'd be negative two minus four is minus six and then the other one is my four minus two plus four which is two which is what i've got here here's one vertice or is it one vertex here's the other now let's find the focus or let go let's find the co-vertices and that's going to be along co-vertices are right here and i'm going to go right here it's negative four for the co-vertices plus let's see h plus a and um and h minus a which is gonna be three four my negative four my, plus three is negative one negative four minus three is minus seven and along along the y-axis for the um the co-vertex that's the minor axis it's at negative two so i so it's going to be negative one and two and negative seven and two for my co-vertices which are right here and right there and that's fine to focus my my remember that is going to be from the center so that's a squared was b squared my a is three my b is nine still we got 20 9 plus 16 is 25 square c squared is 25 that means c is five and it's going to be from the center and again it is along that where the transverse is right here so the focus is going to be again still along transverse negative four so it'll be negative four along these but and then we got to find the center for the um for the y component negative two plus five because we found five is it negative two plus five is three so it'll be negative four three for one of them and then negative four minus um negative i'm sorry minus two minus five is minus seven which is here here is the focus for the other one my slope b over a plus or minus will be four over three and and you can see how it is four over three i can go let's see if i go start here i go let's find an even one one two three four one two three yeah it's a slope over three and we go the other direction the other one i could go let's see one two three four three minus three so those are my my dual slopes again those are slant asymptotes and then the equation for the asymptote is going to be k plus or minus b over a plus my four over three x plus four because my h is four here as we found before so and my my k is minus two so my whole equation for the asymptote will be y equals negative two plus or minus four thirds times x plus four